Um, if compared to past progress uh, in terms of climate change, I would give them a, a, a higher grade, but in terms of the real need to move forward at a national level with this, and uh, both the international level as well, with Copenhagen, uh, it could even be a D or an F, but I, I will uh, be a little more generous. Um, the building energy efficiency and renewable energy segment is very important, as we saw. Building efficiency is that top blue segment. It's critical. Um, we've been demonstrating in Vermont again how this can be done in terms of turning load growth negative. Very important. Um, basically, <coughs> there is some progress in terms of uh, through the ERA funding and the SEP programs now. There are requirements that states document that 90% of, of buildings are code compliant. We've also recommended a significant upgrade in the code to move towards what are called the Architecture 2030 goals. That hasn't happened. Uh, there is some lighting, uh, uh, performance-based lighting um, requirements that have been put in place. Um, there are some elements for building labeling, which would help people understand at time of sale the energy efficiency of buildings. That's in the Waxman Market Bill. The Biden report. Um, Includes some recommendations for the endorsement of financing strategies, including the um, property assessed clean energy funds, which we think are uh, encouraging. Uh, renewable electricity, there is an RPS, Renewable Portfolio Standard, in Waxman Markey, although we feel that it's less aggressive than what the ACES recommendation is to have a national RPS that reached 28% by 2020 um, and with a 3% solar target or carve out too for solar. So the RPS uh, we feel needs to have a solar carve out to help uh, build the portfolio that will have the different elements in there. In transportation, uh, there are some, um, one of the gentlemen speaking this morning mentioned some of the emission based greenhouse gas cafe standards. I didn't know that the accent was on cafe there. Um, <laughs> The cash for clunkers is effectively uh, kind of a scrap and replace type of element. Uh, renewable fuel standard has been proposed by the administration and, and there was recent discussion just the other day of federal support for the high-speed rail. So I uh, see again, I mean, some of the, the recommendations, not the full sweep, but some of the recommendations are being uh, pursued here. Let me give myself three more minutes here to finish. Um, smart grid and transmission. Um, Smart grid is a buzzword. There's a lot of activity. Um, there are, there has been some, um, certainly there's, through the era funding, uh, a lot of investment into the smart grid and transmission. Uh, transmission analysis and planning, which has been lacking at the national level with a particular focus of how to bring renewable resources into the grid and effectively integrate them is there. We see that as promising. Uh, a, a recent example that was just released by NREL is called the Eastern Wind Integration Study. <coughs> haven't seen that or are interested, it's talking about significant integration of wind resource, offshore wind resource on the East Coast, and that was just really so I point people towards that. Um, green economy and workforce development uh, as well. I think clearly there's a big emphasis on jobs. That we, uh, I would, again, would encourage people to go to Brad's discussion tomorrow to really talk about the net economic benefits and job benefits um, that are available with these investments in the renewable and efficiency sectors, uh, but we think that there has been more promising uh, progress on this. What's perhaps lacking, when I say framework, the framework required to have uh, the framework for significant, the, the framework on the carbon and on the other things that I've mentioned here before is perhaps still lacking to really fully support this. We've got jobs training, but we really need the carbon legislation and need them on the efficiency standards and the RPS to get there. Um, last one, uh, federal leadership. We need to be, I think the federal government itself can be more aggressive in terms of moving beyond and upgrading the renewable targets that were set by ETAC in 2005 in terms of renewable energy purchase by the government itself. Um, there is some federal purchasing for energy efficient equipment that was put in place. Um, Part of our recommendations also recommended ending the subsidies to mature in energy industries and also possibly to some restructuring within the DOE. And those have not been addressed. So overall, the year one report card after one year, um, I don't know how many people, I have two high school students and they bring report cards home occasionally. And um, we would look at this and be um, 
wanting to encourage a little more attention. Um, and he thinks the right ways to say these things to try to build on the positive and not overemphasize the negative. Um, you know, try to work with where you are and, and move forward with a good face on it. Um, so, looking forward, we want to support and recognize the progress to date. These aren't yet on the honor roll, but boy, you can do it if you try, right? <laughs> don't, don't give up just because you didn't make it this time. Um, what can we do to commit to improve? And uh, it's really important to keep track of these things so that you don't just wait until like, okay, well, another year we'll get another report card and we'll just see how it goes. You really want to monitor, try to uh, help work with the elected officials and, uh, and through organizations to keep progress going. Thank you very much. Thank you.